add a spring and set a coil gap. Step 1. Remove coil stand and set aside. Step 2. Remove striker plate and set aside. Once you've removed the striker plate, loosen both the top and bottom bolts on the spring bank. Remove bottom bolts from the lug and top bolts from the cross arm. Then remove spring pack and lay top bolts face down with the threads up. Check coil face and striker plate for oxidation. If present, clean with scotch right until removed. If adding springs, add one spacer to the top and bottom of the upper spring. Set spring over top of bolts and align bottom holes. Note that the bigger holes are on the bottom. And don't forget to switch your bolt lengths to compensate for the added plate. When reattaching the spring bank, hold the spring pack tightly to make sure that none of the spacers fall out. Start by threading top bolts back into the cross arm. Once started, guide bottom bolts through the spring pack and thread them into the lug. Bolts should be flush to the back of the cross arm. Remove and replace if too short or too long. Snug all four bolts of the spring bank. One snug apply torque. Bottom torque is 400 foot pounds. Top torque is 200 foot pounds. Now it's time to reinstall the striker plate to the cross arm. Next up, reinstall the coil stand and tighten the bottom bolts. When setting the coil gap, first loosen bolts on the side of the coil. Insert appropriate spacer between the coil face and the striker plate. 30 thousandths for non-rectified units and 60 thousandths for rectified. Tighten jack screws until coil face is completely snug against spacer and striker plate. Do not over tighten. Retighten both bolts on the side of the coil. Tighten evenly so that one side does not pull more than the other. With this information, you can now add a spring and set a coil gap. Thank you for watching.